<coughs> so Mark, I'll uh, just let you take it away since we're right. already telling you about the So uh, I'm loud, so I know everybody can hear me, right? Because I'm in sales, right? Um, this is what I would consider a no bullshit crowd. I mean, you guys make stuff happen, and we sell what you guys and ladies eventually make. So. Uh, I, first of all, thank you very much for letting us come and talk. Um, I won't bore you to tears. This is PowerPoint, but it won't be death by PowerPoint. Searscale is a small 40-person company in Poway, and we do things that are hard for big people to do, uh, big people being you know, the traditional <coughs> tier one, IBM, and Intel, and, and the others. So I just wanted to preface what we've been doing for the last four and a half years at Searscale and as another entity. Uh, we've been doing some really unique hardware designs that just basically take what you know about hardware and say, why do we do things? Why does, does anybody believe hot air moves laterally instead of rising? I mean, you're all I, there's a physics professor here, so I, I believe the theory that hot air rises may hold water. So that's what our premise of, of our company was. It's a liquid. Right, it's a liquid. So. So we were at Baidu today, and so I'm reusing these slides, and we believe specifically for GPU and, and peering, GPUs are where a lot of math and work is being done. And so uh, we have a patent design uh, of how we can put a lot of GPUs into a small space. The good news, if you get a grant proposal or your company is buying K40s by the dozen, fantastic. The bad news is you have now got to cool and, and power these things. And they're 225 watts. Uh, some are 300 watts. There are 500 watts. So be prepared for some big power numbers. Um, Searscale thought it's great to have all these GPUs. And we saw some single socket systems, some dual socket CPUs. And we put some GPUs in there, and everybody was happy. And then we said, well, if two is good, four must be better. And if four is good, let's get eight in there. And if you can cool it, let's just cram them in there and let you software people in the room deal with it. Because the hardware people just plug things in and power it up, right? And you connect a network, and you're good to go. And it's up to the software people to read all those books that they mentioned before to optimize the code, right? Well, it doesn't help if the, if the hardware is, is fundamentally not flawed it's just not optimized for the workloads and the amount of memory and, and the amount of, uh, of data that's being pushed around the memory. I, we have a hardware design CPU person here who probably will agree with this next slide. I'm going to jump ahead. So GPU peering is what CUDA 6 built in. Now you just do a memory write and a memory read, and you just point to your, your uh, GPU and you just ask for it and it shows up. And in a dual socket Intel system, you have a CPU, another CPU, some memory, <coughs> QPI links, and you have a couple of cards. We'll call them I/O cards. These were Nvidia. Uh, these were not Nvidia slides. These were slides from Intel, and you can guess which, what kind of card this is. But it's this still applies. So you have a local write, and this happens really fast. And you have a remote write, and this happens extremely slowly. Then you have a, a read or a write, and you're going across, you know, from from the card back up to the CPU into memory and then back in the card. And then the last kind of transaction they'll have is just uh, pulling information from this CPU's memory space into that one, and that's just horribly slow. And I can prove it's horribly slow because these are numbers that Intel actually said. If I do a local read from our previous description of what a local read is, I'm only across the QPI links. I'm only get going to receive one to two gigabytes per second. And, and as wonderful as those 286 CPUs are, the QPI links are not enough. All those transactions per second, you've got to be able to move data back and forth. Uh, look at the remote write. You're going to get 0.4 gigabytes per second. I mean, it's it's really crying out for a solution. If you have all these GPUs and you can't, you can't write from one side of the system to the other, why bother having them? <coughs> So what Searscale said was, well, if the problem is up here, let's isolate everybody down here, and let's put them all on a riser, 
a physical riser, and we'll put a PLX chip. Anybody work for PLX? Thank you. I appreciate it. My next few house payments are going to be paid by your technology. Okay. <laughs> this got bought up, by the way. <clears throat> yes. Yes. But the 80 lane switch here is a full crossbar switch. So if this GPU wants to communicate with this GPU, it will read data from that one at the same time this one is writing to the system memory. Or at the same time this one is reading from this one while that one's writing to that one. So all of that all of that I.O. is still available. You can do whatever you want with it as long as the software folks among us can schedule that. People are going to say, wow, look at that bottleneck. It's horrible. It's like, well, how many times does your program need to get out to system or CP memory? Maybe start a job, maybe to occasionally read something. Uh, somebody will say, usually when I give this talk, like, what about off, you know, I.O. coming in from a SAN? I'm like, put an HBA here and hang local disk off it. Put a, put a uh, FPGA ASIC that's reading in radio telemetry data at full line rate. And instead of a GPU, put a, you know, we'll have two GPUs, a 40, a 40, excuse me, a 40 gigabit Ethernet or an IB card, and we'll, we'll pull all of the GPUs together across an InfiniBand network. And then we never have to go across the, the root hub of, the, of that switch, or excuse me, of the of local CPU. We've also said, well, if you're not going to use that expensive, relatively expensive QPI link that you're paying $2,000 per CPU for, who here has paid $2,000 for a CPU? Anybody? OK, somebody has. How much is the single socket version of that chip? Same chip, same number of lanes, but it's a single socket. About 500 bucks, right? So you can get started with a single socket version, and if it's got 16 lanes, 16 lanes, and then eight lanes for you know Southbridge and whatever else is necessary on the motherboard, you can still provide eight GPUs, eight K40s, eight you know I'm not going to mention anybody else because you know Nvidia's sponsoring this, eight K40s, eight K20s. We've run Quadro K6000s on this thing, uh, 780 uh, uh, Ti's are in production right now. With, um, with this platform, uh, with actually a, uh, a second CPU. So they, they actually wanted a second CPU because they don't only run uh, information and jobs in their GPUs. So this is actual hardware that we're, we're putting out there. And the last thing is we actually have customers saying, you know, I love the GPUs, but I just need more bandwidth. Can I go ahead and put an IB card on each one? And I said, exactly. But if you're going to do this, then you might as well just do that. And I'm going to cover this side up. And then I'll sell you one of these. And I'll put 24 of these in a rack. You've got 24, let's say 24, that's times 4, that's 96. 96, you're telling me, Mark, I'm going to put 96 K40s in one rack. On what planet? You know, liquid nitrogen, you know, Jupiter or something? No. And how we do that is we connect the, the four cards. We're going to make them K40s. K40s go in here. There's the, the Gen 3, oh, oh, this is not Gen 2, this is Gen 3, PCI Gen 3, full line rate, there's your switch from PLX, love that chip. There's the connector that goes into the motherboard, so we use a flex riser from 3M, so it's not a cheap you know, flex riser you're going to find at Micro City or whatever. So, and, and what makes this possible is this physical link from that card down through this switch into the motherboard, and then over to another sw switch, and then back into another GPU, is all within the 30 inches of a PCI Gen 3 specification. So guess what? No timers, no buffers, no retransmission of any, no, no buffering. It's all full line rate. So that's something that we have not seen anybody else do in hardware. Now, if that sounds interesting, <coughs> we have a couple of flavors that we can provide that to you. Excuse me. All right, there's not <coughs> enough con contrast here. There are four GPUs plugged in to this particular three vertical U blade, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Power supply underneath there is a motherboard, and those are all four Direct Connect. But we happen to have a single socket Intel motherboard that is a is it's vertically mounted here, and we have that riser that I just showed you plugged in underneath this one. So now you have. Uh, and let's say an E3 1200, it's a $200 processor running 4K40s. So now I've just moved that bar from the, the dollar bar from CPU to GPU. So if I can reduce the CPU you spend, even if I save you, you know, five or six hundred dollars 
per system, that's actually going to be closer to a thousand. That's a thousand dollars you get to, to spend on what? GPUs. Yes. And so that's where a lot of the work is going. And this is just one variant of this particular uh, uh, blade that we have. This is the big boy that we showed at GTC. Who went to GTC up in uh, back in March? You were there. You were there. Cool stuff with you. I know. I saw. I talked to you. So you were there. Yeah. So this is what we show. This has been. Uh, this is our third generation product of this. We've had this in production for more than two years. And people would walk up to it. This is about life size. So just so you know, it's about the life size. You walk up to it and they go, and they look at it and they go, how, how? And they look and they notice something. They don't know what they notice. They notice something, but they don't know. There are no fans in this thing. Where the hell are the fans? Are you, you're cooling this with water? Yeah, I'm spraying water on it and it cools evaporatively. No. So what happens is this big beast is 5U wide, which is 5 times 1.75 inches wide. So it's about about that long. And it's got four K40s on that riser that I showed you, and then another four K40s on that riser. And under here is your choice. I don't know what it's going to be until you tell me what to build. Is it going to be a dual socket E52697? Is it going to be a 20, 2609? Because you don't need a lot of CPU or gigahertz. Do you want it to be uh, an ARM64 chip for my friends at APM? We can do that. The problem is that's going to be hanging off an, an eight, uh, a by eight. That's the only only issue you have to worry about. There. So that's something that we can provide for you. Ninety-six of those in tw in twelve servers. This is the rack. Okay, my time. So, who believes hot air rises? Anybody? Can I get a couple of hands? A lot of skeptics in the room. Thank you, Professor. Um, under either on a raised floor or a slab floor or carpet carpet in a tent in the Gobi Desert this is the kind of places excuse me this is the type of places this has been installed so you have power on the bottom you have three shelves of 12 blades a 1U blade a 1U rack mount you turn it 90 degrees you insert it into the rack and you have 36 slots right if it's if it's vertically cooled and air is coming out the top like a chimney, that means you can also take that same 36 and you can put them in the back. So it's a front and back rack. So this is a 72U rack. But there's also 8U of, of traditional horizontal rack space for, for switches. So this is really an 80U rack. So you can go home to tell all your geek friends, I saw an 80U rack tonight. And they would, they're, they're going to like, how tall is that? It's 2 feet wide, 4 feet deep, and 86 inches tall. It's about, about this tall. Okay? So that's how we think of reinventing how equipment is cool. The, the, the weird thing about this is we can put twice as much stuff in a smaller physical footprint and cool better. Because these fans are in, I should have brought one. This is a fan tray about this big and there are two large fans in there. Bigger fans mean bigger uh, prop size and you can, you can run them slower and move more air for the same amount of energy or corollary of that is is run a lot of air for less energy than you can in the little bitty fans that you have in, in a lot of one use. We sold a rack like this that had two CPUs, Xeons, uh, 64 gigs of memory and, a, and an AMD processor, excuse me, to the CIA and it ran 24,000 watts and it cooled all day long and the fan power supplies were measured, the ones that supplying the fans, the 64 large fans in this rack, it was only 2,000 watts. So that's 8% of the total energy going into this rack went to move the air out of the rack. 65 degree input air means 80, 95 degree output air. The input air on the last shelf is, is uh, 85 degrees, which is well within the operating temperature. This is running 4,500 CFM if it needs to. So when somebody says, oh, you can't possibly cool 35,000 watts, the answer is no, you can, because it's using all of the floor space under both sides for that air input. You're not just taking a single, you know, 50% tape floor tile and putting it in there. And in a non race floor, we just, you know, there's an inch and a half, two inch gap all the way around the rack. And this has been in everybody's data center. So I'm, I'm running out of time and trying to be uh, a good partner to my guests. Um, <clears throat> besides the interesting vertically cooled equipment, we also do custom rack mount designs for our friends at NVIDIA. They said, hey, 
People are selling, as the standard grid gaming product, a dual socket system with two GPUs. Okay, we already discussed that a dual socket Intel Xeon is expensive. If a person out here is gaming, and they ask for a game to be run, and then it gets run in the CPU, and then it gets rendered in the GPU, and then sent back to them, did that video flow ever go across to the other CPU or the other GPU? And the answer was no. So why are you paying for a QPI-assisted linked network? I mean, a, a hardware platform. And the answer is because our friends at Supermicro said this is the best platform to put the, the grid cards in. And we said, well, why don't we make a single uh, uh, E3 1200, we connect it with a by 16 on a little mini ITX board and plug in your grid card and we'll put two of them in the same space and we'll put 80 of them in a rack. How does that sound? We cannot keep these in house. Uh, the, the large gaming customers love this. Then a couple months later, APM said, hey, we really like what you did for uh, NVIDIA. Do you think you could do something for us? And we said, absolutely. And NVIDIA said, you got to work with these guys at Searscale because they did a great job for us. Let's change this Intel board out for an ARM64 from Applied Micro. It only has a by 8 for I.O., but that's okay. We'll fix it um, when, when we go into production, when they give us more I.O. And then it's connected to a by 16 for this Tesla, and this is a K20. So imagine 80 of these nodes, all in one rack, all connected with two 10 gigabit Ethernet, and you can use twin X cables. Or if you want, you can use fiber, but if it's all in one rack, why would you? So this is something that we just uh, uh, sold to the National Lab, so we'll be doing some testing on that. I'm getting the wrap it up, Mark. <clears throat> so this is what a rack of my favorite customer in San Diego is. Qualcomm. Right. So all of you with CDMA phones, your phone's chip designs were done on these computers. The other, <laughs> the other vendor in the rack and, and the other side of this data center is responsible for half the data center, but we do three quarters of the work. Why? Because we are denser than HP. And I'll put these racks up against anything that HP has. Why? Because they can't put all of the HP gear at the top of the rack because they don't cool. But our, our racks, even the topmost equipment cools. So that's a 72U rack with 72 systems, dual socket, but here's the crazy thing. This is our old gen. We have a 96 version. We have a 13 inch blade. It has four shelves on both sides. It's 96 systems. That rack is currently running at 32,000 watts. And that's all the time I have. I have cards as, as consolation gifts. Who wants a card? Who wants to buy one of my systems? <laughs> better, it's a better dollar per flop than anywhere you will find it. What's that? Like a flop per what? Wait, I have the range of the box, the box. It depends. I, I hate that it yeah, depends. Yeah. It depends literally on what you're doing. Oh, who's, whose GPU are you using? What, what's the, the scheduling of that? I mean, these are all, we have spreadsheets for determining all this. Is this a new website? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, well, look, I got a card. Somebody gave me a card. Give me the Samsung uh, analysis. Um, What's Samsung closed? We're, we wanted, which, the, the one in uh, South Korea? No, here. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have the same sign today, but I, I don't know which one you're making. So step up. Everybody, this is my VPA no, 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 sales no, marketing. Can you tell us the, the cost per. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, 60.0063 cents per gigaflop. And then our competition was uh, of half of that, you know, 0.003 cents. And he had done the math of the eight way box. Oh, but somebody else at GTC went to our show, our trade show. They saw the box, the actual box sitting there, and they go, how much is that box? And, and, the, and we said, without the GPUs? And he goes, yeah, just, just the box. And we said, no, oh, eight, eight grand? I think we were, we were gouging in eight grand. And he said, oh, geez, I just paid 50 for an HP box. I said, oh, that sucks. Did that? But that came with the GPUs, right? And he the goes, GPUs. no, it did not come with the GPUs. And I said, oh, isn't that the one that every slot gets a by eight and that's all it gets and he goes yeah he said all of these can talk to each other on the same root complex they all show up as gpu peers <laughs> heavy sigh and, and uh, we, we traded cards so that is, that is now a potential customer so thank you very much for your time we've got to get to the airport um, please call <laughs>